I think there is potential for reducing demand for drugs, uh, there's potential for reducing levels of use, there's certainly potential for uh, reducing levels of harm associated with use or uh, levels of problematic use. Um, the, the, there are, and, and I think there's nobody in the drugs field who is opposed to prevention of uh, drug use or drug harms in broad principle. There's a, there, there is, however, an active debate about what the best way to do that is. Um, the evidence base for uh, what you might see as such traditional forms of prevention is not, is not great. Um, things like the DARE program in, in the US have been pretty rigorous, rigorously evaluated and they, they've not demonstrated um, great value for money. They're very expensive and they haven't really delivered uh, the, what was hoped from them. That doesn't mean they weren't well intentioned or that they were entirely wrong and there's clearly lessons to learn. And that, 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 but, but essentially the, the evidence base for more traditional kind of uh, school-based prevention or, or, or sort of uh, mass media uh, prevention campaigns has not been great. It's not been completely flawed but it's, it's, not, it's not been brilliant. Um, so the question is, well, what can you do? And I think probably looking at the bigger picture, trying to identify what the key drivers of drug use and problematic drug use specifically are, is probably the best way forward. So looking at issues of poverty and inequality and social deprivation, looking at problems in the mental health uh, care system, looking at in child care system, um, looking at issues of parenting and, and schooling. You know, it's a huge issue, but generally, uh, I would suggest problems of um, you know, problematic drug use reflects low levels of uh, sort of social well-being. So, you, and, and addressing that is going to be the key to reducing problematic drug use in the longer term. But that is obviously a much more ambitious, wider social policy program and debate, um, and it certainly won't be uh, dealt with by you know, poster campaigns saying uh, drugs are bad for you or, or such and such. Clearly educating young people about risk is very important, but um, on the one hand, while we might want to do that, we might want to kind of try, particularly try and discourage young people from starting drugs or, prevent, or, or trying to raise the age of first use and those kind of things. Those are obviously laudable goals, um, but we also need to take care that um, a, a significant minority um, can't be reached or that those messages won't impact on and they will try drugs. So we need to make sure for those people that when they do try drugs they do so as, as, as safely and as responsibly as is possible. Clearly there are risks, undoubtedly there are risks, but we owe it to those young people um, to give them solid harm reduction messages so that if, if and when they do try drugs um, they do so as safely as possible. So it's you quite mean, a trick. You mean illegal drugs when you say? I mean both kinds of drugs. Uh, illegal drugs carry additional risks, both in terms of the law and in terms of the unpredictability of what you're buying and, uh, and the fact that you tend to use it in more marginal environments um, and not necessarily with the same uh, sort of patterns and beha safe behaviours. But um, we need to uh, reach out to those young people and, and educate them how to use, use those drugs as safely as possible if prevention messages uh, miss them and unfortunately for a lot of a lot of young people those prevention messages do, do either miss them or they don't have the, the, the desired impact so it's quite a delicate balancing act between um, trying to prevent people from using drugs at all and also if they do use drugs to prevent them from being overly harmed by those drugs.